Hello! In this video, we will continue our discussion of how to calculate the amount of work done, specifically to find the amount of work required to pump fluid from a tank. In our previous video on work, we used the constant force formula for work, work equals force times distance, and considered how we can combine the use of the formula with the concepts of partition and sum to calculate the amount of work required to stretch a spring a certain distance. Since the spring has varying force depending on how far it is stretched or compressed, we considered the amount of work done to apply a force over a small distance. Since we applied the force over a short distance, we considered that the force was nearly constant. We added the small amounts of work and considered the limit of the sum as the norm of the partition went to zero. In this video, we will consider the work required to pump fluid from a tank to a certain platform. This time, we will partition the fluid and determine the amount of work required to move each piece or each layer of fluid in the tank since the distance the fluid must travel as the force is applied will vary depending on where the fluid is positioned in the tank. A water tank in the shape of a hemisphere of radius 2 meters is full of water. How much work is required to pump all the water to a platform 4 meters above the tank? We can use that the density of water is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. First, as we've done in all the other situations that we've worked with so far, we draw a situation, the scenario. When we draw the tank and the platform, we include a coordinate axis to identify the distance each layer of fluid must travel. Essential in this process to identify a zero. We, put, we can put the zero at the bottom of the tank or at the location of the platform or any place we'd like along the coordinate axis. For this example, we'll place the zero on the axis that aligns with the lowest point of the tank. So we'll modify our drawing and put it here. Next, we have to consider the interval which gets partitioned. Since we partition the water in the tank, we partition the closed interval from 0 to 2 into n pieces, thereby partitioning the water into layers. Each layer will look like a disk. For the partition, we then consider layers of water held in the tank. We will calculate the amount of work required to overcome gravity and raise the kth layer of water to the platform. So delta W sub K is approximately the force needed to raise the kth layer of water in the, the kth distance. And here we can see in our diagram our kth layer of water in a cylindrical disk. That disk, we partition the interval from H between 0 and 2, so this disk sits at h sub k and it must be raised a distance d sub k which is the platform 6 minus h sub k. As we calculate delta w sub k we note that force is simply the weight of that kth layer of water where weight is mass times acceleration. The mass will come from the mass density times the volume of water which will multiply by acceleration and the distance that that layer has to travel. So the mass density is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. Volume is delta V sub K times acceleration, which we represent as G, and the distance is 6 minus H sub K. The volume of water is simply the volume of that cylindrical disk. So that's pi R squared times delta H sub K. Acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. Distance is going to be measured in meters. And so when we consider the units involved, we can multiply those units out. We see that we get kilograms times meters per second squared times meter, which is simply a newton meter or a joule. So the units work out to be a unit of work, which is what we want. Let's look further and see how we then calculate the radius of that disk. If I enlarge that image, I see that if we have the center of our hemisphere here, which I'll put here on this triangle, from that center we go down 2 minus h sub k units, and then this r of k is to the outer edge of our cylindrical disk and that gives us our radius of our cylindrical disk. Knowing that the hemisphere has radius 2, I can then use the Pythagorean theorem and find that the radius of our cylindrical 
disk is the square root of 4 h sub k minus h sub k squared. We'll put this into our delta w sub k formula. It gets squared as the radius gets squared. And we can simplify things a bit so that when we calculate the amount of work done to raise each layer of water to the platform, we develop a Riemann sum to get the sum k going from 1 to n of 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter times pi times 4 h sub k minus h sub k squared times delta h sub k times acceleration due to gravity times 6 minus h sub k. We can clean things up a bit and take the limit of the Riemann sum as the norm of the partition goes to 0, and we get the definite integral from 0 to 2 of 1,000 times 9.8 times pi times 4h minus h squared times 6 minus h dh. And we know that the limits of integration, 0 and 2, are the endpoints of the interval we partition specifically related to the water in the tank. We expand the polynomial and integrate, and we get the amount of work calculated to be just under 780,000 joules. Now in this problem, we were given the mass density of water, 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter, to help us calculate the amount of work. The mass density of an object is the ratio of the object's mass to its unit volume. In other problems, we will be given the weight density of an object in order to calculate work. Weight density gives the ratio of the object's weight to its unit volume. And as you recall, weight is a measure of the force of gravity acting on the object. So weight is already a force. It's mass times acceleration. So therefore, when calculating the amount of work, if you're given a weight density, the force will simply be a calculation of the weight density times the volume. So work, in general, will be weight density times volume times distance. As we did in this problem, when given a mass density, we must calculate the object's weight density by multiplying the mass density times acceleration and then multiplying by volume to calculate the force. So the amount of work will be a calculation of the mass density times acceleration times volume times distance. And in all of this, the big clue is to keep track of your units. And this will, be sure, this will help you to make sure that you get where you want to be in your solution path. What are the important ideas to take from this video? First, we can partition the object and calculate the amount of work required to move each small piece of the object, relying on the constant force formula for work. Work equals force times distance. When calculating the amount of work required, we need to be careful to first set up a coordinate axis related to the direction each piece will move to reach the platform. Note what object is being partitioned. For example, it, it's not the, it may not be the entire interval from the bottom of the tank to the platform. This affects the limits of integration. Third, we have to consider that the force involved in many of the problems involving the calculation of work to move fluid in a tank is weight, which is mass times acceleration. We figure the distance from the platform to a generic kth level of fluid. We want to make sure we check the units. And then we sum the small amounts of work to eventually develop the definite integral.